My coverage of Computex 2018 is sponsored by EVGA. EVGA offers a wide range of products, including GPUs, cases, power supplies, motherboards, and more. To learn how to take your rig to the next level, head to EVGA.com. All right, guys, we made it over here to the ASUS booth where really the only thing I'm interested in, we'll talk about some AIO coolers and stuff, but this is the ROG phone. No doubt you guys have heard of it by now. I am a little late to the party, but that's because I kind of wanted to soak in all the information that I could about this because I am doing this video from the perspective of someone who does not care about this kind of stuff. I'm a PC gamer, sure, um, but my question is why? Why do we need this? Why do we need a PC built smartphone? I mean, the Razer phone did it. I feel like this is just trying to kind of get that piece of the pie that Razer's sort of already done. Um, okay, we'll talk about specs for a second here. This is the it's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 840. It's 2.96 gigahertz, 512 gigabytes of storage, has an AMOLED HD display, and it has a 4,000 milliamp battery, and it says a unique cooling solution. Now, you can see some vents right here, so there probably is some active cooling in there. Uh, we also have this attachment on this phone, as you can see, that goes right up to those vents I just showed, and that is, is looks like it's giving you some more active cooling. So, yeah, there we go, focus works. So this is the device right here. Now what they are doing is they are targeting people who are on the go, people who spend a lot of time traveling on planes, trains, whatever, who want to basically use a single device to kind of get all their work done, play games, whatever. Has a docking station, there are some handheld um, attachments. In fact, you can see this gentleman right over here is using said attachment. There's a handheld attachment, there's external batteries, docking stations, you name it, it's available for it. So I asked them specifically why. Why, why does this need to exist? Because I personally don't care for this. And I mean, the answer was what I just gave you. They find that more people are spending time traveling and using their devices for either gaming or productivity or whatever it may be. And they want to, this was built off of sort of the Zenfone uh, docking concept back from like 2013. I think I saw that in, in CES 2013, where it's basically the same type of function where you dock this and it becomes your complete workstation. So here's an example of that docking station right here. It's docked, it's being charged, it's hooked up to a monitor, it's hooked up to actual physical peripherals. You've got a mouse, you've got a keyboard. So you can see, as I wiggle the mouse, we are moving our screen. This is just kind of a generic PUBG type of a game playing right here, I think. It's definitely not PUBG, but it looks very similar to it. So here's an example of a handheld docking station. So it adds another 6,000 milliamps worth of battery, four speakers. Uh, this is the actual phone up here. It looks like another phone down here is just an extension screen. So you actually are turning this into, kind of reminds me of like an NVIDIA Shield type of a deal. You actually have some physical buttons on the top right here. Uh, so you can see you have some trigger button on the right, trigger button on the left but this is designed to more or less expand the phone into a more working handheld device, not even just for games, but it doubles your screen real estate, gives you better speakers, better battery life. So that's obviously an option that's available in terms of expandability. So here's the handheld device I was talking about a second ago. It turns it into more like a Nintendo Switch kind of a deal. But what you might be actually noticing here is all of these accessories are obviously additional cost. And the question is gonna be, how much is this gonna cost in the, un in the end? If the phone is potentially $1,000, and let's say each one of these particular peripherals costs 100 bucks or more each. Now you're talking about a mobile gaming phone that at the end of the day costs way more than even a high-end PC would cost you to build. So that's where this particular type of device just loses me as something that I'm not really all that interested in. I thought maybe I was coming in here as kind of a nanny, you know, naysayer, but I think my particular opinion on this matter is not changing as I'm messing with the device. Now this is one of those things where they don't have pricing and stuff established yet. There's rumors of it being about $1,000. The Razer phone is definitely shown that there is a market for it. It was extremely hard to get your hands on, uh, was always sold out. And if this booth isn't any indication, there is definitely a lot of interest in this sort of thing. Now, this is where I need you guys to sound off. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in this. I might potentially buy one when it comes out to do sort of a more user uh, long-term review. But guys, I'm sure you guys know by now, smartphones and stuff is just not something I am all that passionate about. But this has definitely been a hot topic. The views on YouTube have definitely shown that the PC gamer market does indeed appear to be 
interested, at least on a surface level. Maybe they're interested in seeing what people have to say, more so than being interested in the device itself. So that's where you guys come in. Sound off in the comments below and let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'm curious to see what the overall consensus is regarding this phone. Thanks for watching this video, guys. As always, a huge thank you to EVGA for sponsoring today's video. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one.